Music fans around the world are mourning the loss of some Motown magic this afternoon. Many of us have been sharing our memories of Mary Wilson, the longest reigning member of the original blockbuster group, The Supremes. Paula Tutman has been lucky enough to spend time with Wilson over the years and joins us now with a very personal look at a music icon. Paula. Karen, I think magic is a great way to explain what Mary Wilson brought to everyone she met. This is a shocker. This is a surprise because she's been in touch with friends recently and she didn't feel well, but it didn't feel fatal. Hi, this is Mary Wilson of the Supremes. Yeah. <laughs> Giggly, sweet, fun, your girlfriend next door. She sent this video to her friend Beverly Bantam and told her she wasn't feeling well. My new Mary Wilson YouTube channel. In five days, she would be gone. Suddenly, shockingly, excruciatingly gone. Beverly, who has been a sister to Mary in life and in business, spoke to me by phone this morning in between breaking the news to the rest of the world. She did not know she was greatly ill. She knew she was in pain and she explained to me where the pain was um, but uh, neither one of us um i just prayed that the doctors would find out what that pain was and give her some for her meds and get rid of the pain and that was friday so no to my knowledge she never uh, felt that she was gravely ill mary remained fit mentally physically and vocally <laughs> This was her in 2016 when she performed with a DSO. Ever beautiful, ever fabulous. She and I actually spent the day together touring the new Detroit. Stop in the name of love. Wilson began her career here in Detroit in 1959 as a singer in what was then called the Primettes. Wilson, Diana Ross, and Florence Ballard later became known as the Supremes, Motown's most successful group of the 1960s, with 12 number one singles. She was a teenager when she started, and Martha Reeves was her roommate. One night they had, um, uh, at the Holiday Inn, they had a, a room raid, and they were looking for the guys who were not in their rooms. <laughs> but Mary and I were... Uh, safely in our beds. She never met fans. Most everyone who personally met her will say they met a friend. I, uh, in 2017, met her in Las Vegas at the Wynn Hotel, and she was so gracious. She was so sweet. And I just ran up to her. I was like, Miss Wilson. Like, I was like, I'm from Detroit. And she started talking about her upbringing, started talking about the legacy of the Supremes. And while the world mourns an icon, those who knew her best mourn the loss of an angel. Yeah, so um, I wanted to show you this picture because uh, this is really an example of how she was. Uh, we look like pals, real pals in this picture. We weren't. We This was a reporter who was interviewing an icon, but that's who she was. That's how she treated absolutely everyone she met. Um, she was just a really, really great and gracious person. Um, I, I just think her loss is really going to be felt everywhere, Karen. It really is, Paula. I mean, she embraced people at the same time, really embracing Detroit, always speaking so highly of our city. Yeah, for sure. She returned often. She had friends here and, and you know, this was a, a lot like her home here. She had a business ventures and she was planning to continue to tour. This, this was not someone who was sick, who thought that she wasn't going to be around when this COVID business was over. You know, so frightening to see that clip of her, and she seemed so healthy just a few days ago. Oh. Uh, obviously, we'll see what the um, yeah. doctors have to say about that. All right, thank you, Paula. We appreciate it. And love the photo of you two together.